Every year, a few drops of warm water are all it takes to melt a human brain from the inside. This is caused by Nagleria thalleri, the brain-eating amoeba. Most of the time, it just drifts in lakes and rivers, until one splash sends it up someone's nose, and within days, the person is dead. Ironically enough, once scientists thought it was harmless, now, new research shows it's been evolving for billions of years, carrying ancient tools that accidentally turned it into one of nature's deadliest killers. So how did a peaceful microbe become a brain-eating monster? Should we be worried it's spreading to new waters? That climate change is giving it more territory or that soon, nowhere will be safe to swim? Well, to find out for sure, we have to go back, deep into time, to trace Nagleria's strange and brutal evolution. For the first billion years on Earth, everything was single cells, but then came a turning point. About two billion years ago, cells learned to organize themselves. They built compartments inside, tiny structures that could store energy, process food, and control what the cell did. These were the very first complex cells. One type of these new cells could move and eat. We call them protists, and amoeba were among the first protists to evolve. Over millions of years, amoeba branched out into different families. Some developed that classic blob shape we imagine. They became amoeba proteus, slime molds, and even parasites that could slip into human bodies. These belong to one family called amoebazoa. But there's another family too, Percolozoa. This group evolved amoeba independently, taking their own evolutionary path. Nagleria belongs to the second family. They have unique structures inside their cells and can switch between two different forms, one blobby, one with whip-like tails. Mostly harmless, they eat bacteria and live peacefully. Of the roughly 47 known Nagleria species living in soil and fresh water around the world, only one has ever infected a human. Enthalerae it behaves almost the same as its cousins, except for one thing, and Fowlery loves heat. It can survive up to 45 degrees Celsius compared to its cousins that die at temperatures that high. That single trait gave N. Fowlery a dangerous advantage. It could live in places other amoeba couldn't. And one day, N. Fowlery encounters something it wasn't designed to hunt, humans. Naturally, Enfalery does not crave human brains because people are not part of its evolutionary plan. However, every so often, this free-living amoeba gets an opportunity. When warm, contaminated water splashes up someone's nose, it becomes one of the deadliest misfortunes for a human ever. The amoeba sticks to the thin lining of the nasal cavity and starts to bore its way through. There's a paper-thin wall between the nose and the brain. The amoeba pushes through it, following the nerve pathways like a map leading directly to the brain. X marks the spot. Once inside the cranium, it starts feeding on the brain. The brain cells start to die as the amoeba consumes them, but it gets worse. The amoeba releases dangerous enzymes that dissolve the protective walls around the brain cells and blood vessels. The immune system sends white blood cells to attack the invader, but in the process also damage the brain. Within days, the brain is ravaged beyond recovery, and as a result, the infected person dies. Doctors call it primary amoebic meningocephalitis, or PAM. Over 95% of people do not survive. So how did a simple bacteria eater become equipped with such deadly weapons? In warm water, N. fowlery acts like a normal amoeba. It eats bacteria quietly. But when it enters the brain, its genes switch on differently. Genes that help it move become more active, and the amoeba becomes aggressive and dangerous, using the same genes in a new, deadlier way. N. fowlery also picked up genes from bacteria it ate over millions of years ago. About 2.7% of its DNA came from bacteria this way. These genes taught it how to survive in different places and eat different foods. This flexibility helped Enfalery adapt better than other amoeba. Inside the brain, Enfalery does something pretty clever. It feeds on neurotransmitters, chemicals the brain uses to work, and it uses these as fuel. This helps it survive longer inside the skull. Enfalery also has extra copies of certain proteins. These proteins break down cell walls and pump out destructive chemicals. More copies means more damage. So Enfalery didn't need new 
new weapons, it took what it already had and learned to use it more aggressively. Other amoeba, like Acanth amoeba, learned to invade brains too, but they did it completely differently. Acanth amoeba and Balamuthia are related to Nagleria, but they're not as dangerous. Acanth amoeba causes brain infections slowly, similar to its cousin Balamuthia, unlike Enfalery that kills you within two weeks at most. These three amoeba split apart billions of years ago. Each one developed the ability to infect brains completely separately, but their separation was an accident. Scientists have decoded Enfalery's complete genetic code. The genome is almost identical to harmless amoeba like Engruberi. The Negleria family has about 13,943 genes in total. Around 3,563 are in every strain. These handle basic survival. The remaining 10,380 genes vary between strains. Different amoeba have different optional genes. What makes Enfalery deadly isn't new DNA, it's how the genes are controlled. It's using the same tools in new ways, but the real danger is happening now. Our planet is warming. Cool lakes are becoming warm, swimming pools stay heated year-round, water systems are getting warmer. More warm water means more space for Enfalery, and we're already seeing it happen. In the United States, the amoeba is marching north. For decades, infections happened mainly in southern states, but now it's appearing in places it never reached before. In 2010, a child died in Minnesota after swimming in a lake. In 2011, Louisiana reported infections in areas that were previously too cold. And in 2020, a boy in Texas died after playing in a splash pad connected to the city water supply. The amoeba had gotten into the pipes. The pattern is clear. Enfalery is expanding its territory. Geothermal springs are becoming hotspots. These naturally heated waters create perfect breeding grounds. Places like hot springs in Arkansas and thermal pools in volcanic regions now carry the amoeba year-round. Industrial sites make it worse. Power plants dump warm water back into rivers and lakes. This heated discharge raises water temperatures for miles downstream. Each warm zone becomes a new home for Enfalery. Scientists predict the amoeba will keep spreading north as temperatures rise, and drought is also a problem. When rivers run low and temperatures spike, people seek relief in whatever water they can find. These are exactly the conditions the Enfalery loves. Countries once too cold for Enfalery now see infections, but as Enfalery spreads, doctors face an impossible challenge. The death rate is staggering. Over 97% of infected people die because treatment almost never works. The problem is the timing. By the time symptoms appear, the damage is already catastrophic. It starts with a headache, then fever. Doctors often think it's bacterial meningitis and start antibiotics immediately. But antibiotics don't kill amoeba. By the time doctors realize it's PAM, the brain tissue is already liquefying. Scientists study every survivor, hunting for patterns, but the sample size is tragically small. For now, prevention is the only reliable defense. Public health agencies now teach simple safety measures. Hold your nose when diving in warm, fresh water. Use nose clips if you're swimming in lakes or rivers. Don't disturb sediments where Enfalery hides. If you rinse your sinuses, use boiled or sterile water. Never tap. These simple steps block the main infection route, water up the nose. Some areas now monitor water quality in popular swimming spots, but scientists don't have a quick test to find Enfalery in water still. It's invisible. Meanwhile, scientists are hunting for solutions in the lab. Every survivor of PAM is studied carefully. Researchers analyze Enfalery's genome looking for weak points. They study its unique membrane proteins, hoping to find drug targets. Some scientists are exploring whether other microbes could be used to control Enfalery in water, but all of this raises a bigger question. What does the future actually look like? Scientists have run the models, and the predictions are not comforting to say the least. By 2050, most of the continental U.S. could have suitable habitat for Enfalery. Parts of Europe that are currently too cold may become vulnerable. Computer models show that for every 1 degree Celsius increase in water temperature, Enfalery could spread 30 to 50 kilometers further north. The amoeba is already adapting. Some strains collected from northern lakes show genetic variations that suggest higher temperature tolerance. They're surviving in waters that would have killed their ancestors. This means they could potentially spread into both colder regions as they warm up and hotter regions by developing even greater heat resistance. Right now, infecting humans is an evolutionary dead end for the amoeba. It can't spread person to person. It dies with the victim. But evolution works through accidents. If Enfalery spends more time in human tissue through increased contact, random mutations might occur. 
Scientists are also worried about human infrastructure. They create ideal conditions. The water stays warm, it circulates slowly, bacteria multiply, giving the amoeba plenty to eat, some major cities now have protocols for flushing water systems and boosting chlorine during heat waves, but many smaller municipalities don't have these safeguards. New drug protocols are also being tested. Combinations of existing medications given in specific sequences show better results in animal models. Some cities are also installing UV treatment systems in public pools and splash pads. UV light kills the amoeba without chemicals. Scientists are also studying the amoeba's predators. Certain other microbes hunt and consume Enfalari naturally. The technology exists, the knowledge is growing. The question is whether we'll implement solutions fast enough to keep pace with a warming world. The future is not fixed, but the window for action is narrowing. And studying Enfalari reminds us that evolution does not plot with us in mind. For millions of years, Negleria fowlery and its free-living relatives have prowled warm waters long before humans ever came along. Their story is a testament to life's ingenuity. A tiny amoeba developed the surprising ability to feast on the richest tissue on Earth, the human brain. But we are only beginning to understand its place in nature. The brain-eating amoeba reminds us that colossal impacts can come from the smallest of creatures. As climate change reshapes habitats, the line between our world and the amoeba's world is blurring. Protecting ourselves means respecting that boundary by taking basic precautions and by monitoring our waters. The more we learn about N. Fowlery's origins and evolution, the better we can anticipate and prevent future tragedies. The invisible war between microbes and hosts continues, and we're only just beginning to understand the battlefield. But Enfalery isn't the only creature that learned to invade. Viruses have perfected something far more sinister. Check out our video on the evolution of viruses to learn more about nature's smallest and most ruthless killers. Thank you for watching.